Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show. You know where you are, the nine at nine with me, Tigo. And you know, a lot of people have been talking about speaking from stages and, and being a keynote and doing virtual events and all that kind of stuff. And they ask me quite often. So we've got some stages coming up, but that's not what it's about. Today, I want to talk with someone that's a good buddy of mine, a good friend of mine. She helps me declutter. And she's also burning up the stages, y'all. So sit right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Yeah, I want to talk about stages. I personally love being an MC. I love being a host, you know, and I love being on stages virtually or in person so much that we're starting to create our own stages right here in Las Vegas. And I thought, hmm, who can I talk to that I can hang out with that's been through the journey of deciding you want to be on a stage and is now burning up the stages. So I called my buddy Mel Mason and she said, yeah, I'll come talk about that. Hey, Mel, what's happening? What's happening, Tigo? I love hanging out with you and talking about all kinds of fun stuff, decluttering, speaking. It. Yeah, man, I love this stuff. But I got to ask you, did you ever have a fear of the stage? Oh, my God. Or were you like, Hell let's yes. just go? Oh, my God, right, it was terrifying. The first, like, <laughs> the high, whole idea of getting up on stage and speaking in front of people is terrifying and when i my first talk that i ever gave i thought you needed to memorize the whole thing and instead of just having bullet points and speaking off the cuff and i actually started the talk and totally forgot what i was going to say and i was like oh i literally owned it on stage and was like i totally forgot i'm going to start over and i just started over <laughs> you remind me of of will smith and fresh prince of bel-air if you go back and watch the first couple of episodes he memorized the entire script and when he was not supposed to be talking, he is literally on camera going. <laughs> so the other people's words, it's hilarious. They never changed it. So how did you get past the fear, the initial fear when, a, when you walk out there? Because some of these lights are bright. I know ours are. So you walk out there in those bright lights. What made you not just go deer in a headlight and run off the stage? A prayer, <laughs> pray to God because left to my own devices, like I'm like, oh man, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I think also, I think it helped too. I don't know if you remember like being in middle school where you get on stage to recite a poem or something like that. And I had to come out on stage in front of this huge auditorium and recite a poem for school. And that was, that was a horrifying. So that was my very first speaking and experience in front of a group of people. So I had a taste of it. And it's just like with fear, it's what are you going to do? Like you can get paralyzed by it or you can walk through it. And usually when you walk through it, what's on the other side is just freaking amazing. You know, that brings up memories of me standing there going in elementary school. Okay, we're not going to go there. I'm sure some of my friends from my high school are looking now for pictures that they can embarrass the heck out of me with. Let's not do that. Anyway, so when you're out there and you're ready to go and they say, you know, three, two, one, what is your first thought when you can kind of see the audience because I try to make it so you can't see the audience because usually that's what stops people but when you can kind of see the audience what's the first thought that goes through your mind how am I going to make an impact it's not definitely are you naked seeing them naked that doesn't work for me and it really works for me when I can connect with the audience when I can see their eyes when I can know that what I'm saying is impacting them because if they're like glazed over what I'm saying isn't landing but if they're nodding and they're connected and they're making eye contact with me then I know what I'm saying is landing and making an impact 
you know, nowadays there's be, there's a lot more women that are joining the speakers environment. They're getting out there. Yeah. And, <laughs> and a lot of times they just couldn't get in. So now we're building our own stages and inviting people in. But I've had quite a few times in my lifetime where I was the only female or the only person of color that was in the panel that was going to be speaking. Have you experienced that? And, and how did you feel about that? Um, I actually haven't personally experienced, but one of my mentors, Forbes Riley, she was invited to speak at the 10X conference and she was the only female speaking at the 10X conference. Like it's a huge, huge thing on smaller stages here in my community or panels. When I speak locally, um, I was actually, I think men were actually the lower denominator in a panel I just spoke on recently. I think there was three women to two men. Wow, women rock. You know, yes. and it's funny you had mentioned Forge Riley because I just joined her first, you know, my first training with her and she's just absolutely amazing. And I'm sitting there on a Sunday afternoon and she starts talking about this superstar and how she, you know, transcended and, and she's just blazing. And I look up and I'm like, hey, that's Mel Mason. So I'm in the chat going, that's my buddy. I know her. She's amazing. Oh my God. You know, as I go through it and she's just showing you on these stages and talking about how you, you know, faced your fears and, and just went directly for your target. How did you do that? Why did you decide to do that? Yeah. So I knew from a young age that the experience that I went through, all the trauma and the loss that I experienced in my life was not for nothing. It was meant to help others. And the only way for it to be a benefit of others is to get the message out there. And how else can you get your message out there, but speak about it? And that means Mm -hmm. getting in front of people, whether on stages or on Zoom or in, you know, workshops, you get to get in front of people and you get to share it. And that's the only way. And so, Knowing that, I just became willing to do whatever it took to get over my fears and to develop the skills. So I went to Toastmasters. I took uh, Forbes Riley's on-camera trainings to master my on-camera presence and all of that good stuff. Just being willing to do whatever it takes. So I'm, I know there's a young person out there that's going, man, I want to, you know, I want to speak from stages. Or maybe there's someone who's been doing their business or their profession for years, but they know you know, people aren't reading right now. They want to watch video. That's where it's at, social media. And they're going, I don't even know how to get started. Can you give us a couple of tips to getting started in taking stages, virtual or in person? If you're social media, just start doing those Facebook and Instagram lives. Like just jump on, hit live and just start talking and get over the fear. People want to see you real. They don't want you polished. They don't want you perfect. They want to see you stumble over your words. They want to hear the struggles that you're having. They want to know that you're a human person and not a robot. So just hit live and go. Yeah, I tell people all the time, I've been telling them for almost 20 years, there's a production company in your pocket. You know, these new phones right now are 4K. Some of them are 6K. You know, pull that bad boy out, you know, get it arm's distance away and and just talk for a minute. Talk for five minutes. Build your stamina up. And who cares if it's not perfect? They're not looking for perfect. They could watch, you know, ABC, NBC to, to see quote unquote perfect. But now... I even see flubs on the major multi-million dollar, you know, films and television shows. We all do it. It's just step out of your comfort zone, which is easier to say than to do. I know. But once you do it, you find out how much more you can do. So what are you afraid of, Miss Mel Mason? Anything? Um, Because I see you hanging off of rocks and and doing marathons and you got your own shows and you're an author and you're trying to declutter my life, which, you know, God help you trying to do that. But what are you are you afraid of anything anymore? Do you just, you know, do that one bite at a time elephant thing? You know, it's funny, even though I rock climb and I enjoy climbing, if I let myself think about it, out in the real world, not climbing in a gym with a mat under you, 
Like I'm afraid of actual falling. Like if I were to fall and die, that is not how I want to go. Am I fine? Like going out hiking and thinking about the fact that I might actually get eaten by a mountain lion. Like I'm fine with that. But the thought of falling and going splat for some reason is a fear. That's it. We're putting a tracking device on you. You are no longer allowed to go out. You're fine with that. No, you're not. We need Mel Mason here. What is wrong with you? So I did the 12 hour trek recently. Have you heard of the 12 okay. hour walk? N no. So I was on this, it's this 12 hour solo hike where you or walk where you don't have any distractions, no music, no phone. Like, you I mean, you have it with you for emergencies, but you're not on it at all. You're just with yourself. And I went hiking out in the deep canyons here where I live. And I got so far out that the only tracks were mine and the mountain lions. And I was following the mountain lions tracks. Um, no. <laughs> and I kept going. And I, no, let me tell you that right now. No. So before I let you get out of here, because you knew Alan just threw up the one minute warning, where do they find your book? What is your book titled and what's it about? Uh, Freedom from Clutter, the guaranteed foolproof step-by-step -step process to remove the stuff that's weighing you down. And of course, it's not about the stuff. The stuff is only a symptom. And you can get the whole thing for free at freegiftfrommel.com. I love it. I love it. You're the best. We're getting you that tracking device for it with. I'm telling you, I'm on Amazon right now thinking about it. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, out there with the mountain lion. What is wrong? Okay. We're going to let you go before I really lecture you like the big sister that I am. <laughs> I love you, my friend. I can't wait you. to see what we talk about next month. Thank you for always answering the call when I call you. You're the best. All right, everybody, you heard her. Go get her book. If you missed the, mail, the web address, you know what to do. Go to Tigo Direct, type in Mel, type in Mason, type in Declutter, and maybe we can get Alan to even put Mountain Lion up there since she's the only one walking with them. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you'll come back next time. And as always, I'm Tigo. I'll talk to you next time out there with the Mountain Lion.